Um, I'm should inform you that this session is to last for uh, 30 minutes, including discussion. So please, all of you, enjoy Professor Noel Scott's, I'm sure, challenging presentation. Professor, to you, my very best wishes. Uh, welcome, and uh, the stage is yours. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Anna, and uh, you're looking marvelous today. You're looking very well. <laughs> Uh, and to my colleagues in Sintour, uh, Professor Pinto and others, welcome. Um, Professor Jafar Jafari, uh, who needs no interruption, uh, <laughs> interruption into, uh, introduction. Um, thank you again for, um, for coming to see me today. And um, many of my other colleagues. So I see um, a number of people are here, uh, some who will be talking in the next uh, session. Uh, Serena and Jenny and others, and uh, but I also see the bald head of Ado, uh, who's looking marvellous, and um, many of my other colleagues. So uh, it's great to be here. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen now um, because I've got a bit to talk about. Um, this is um, my sort of passion at the moment, and so hopefully um, you won't get too upset if I if I uh, go crazy. But um, this is. Uh, hope, c can you see my screen, Anna? Yes, yes, yes. I okay. Can. So, so I'm going to talk about tourism experiences, and I'm going to go into your mind and uh, perhaps look at it from a bit of a psychological perspective. I'm going to go fairly quickly. I have put the um, presentation uh, as a file, so you can download if they'd want to. So. Um, this all started, the idea of um, experiences started perhaps back in 1970, um, around 50 years ago, when Toffler wrote a book called Future Shock. Very interesting. And he wrote that uh, an economy is being created geared to the provision of psychic gratification, that a process of psychologicalization finds place and humans will strive for a better quality of life. Fascinating. So... What we would think about today, this idea of wellness and stuff, maybe if we if we go back a hundred years, was quite unusual. Um, later, uh, um, excuse me, I'll just go back. Um, later, uh, this idea was picked up as it became more popular. Pine and Gilmore picked this idea up and talked about new sources of economic value. And the idea that to we're going from commodities, that, that value is created primarily from commodities in the past, then by goods in the past, then from services more recently. We're moving into experiences and perhaps in future, it will be about transformation, tr transformation, spiritualization uh, and so on. So um, the, in, in tourism, we've sort of all, always known and in fact the basis of tourism is um, that experiences are valuable um, a visit to um, Disney World or Disneyland is about having an experience through symbols through stories and by um, memorabilia memorabilia which provide us with value of different types and value from family togetherness, value from fun and excitement. But today, um, this idea of experience has become incredibly popular and everyone wants to have an experience or to research experience or to develop experiences. So we talk about user experience, design experience, quality of experience, lived experience, uh, tourism experience, aesthetics, experiential marketing, and it goes on and on. And uh, I would like to say that, uh, th th this, um, th th these were the topics at an interesting um, conference recently uh, where people were asked why they were attending, what their interest was. And uh, so all these, I these areas, though, I think have similar problems. And indeed, at this conference, um, I, I did a bit of a look through yeah, and I saw so. that... that um, a number of the papers, uh, at least 13 papers uh, listed in the pr proceedings or in the um, program, were clearly talking about issues related to experience. Um, Faro's sp story spot, um, 
designing compelling accommodation scapes, uh, mapping the memorable tourism experiences through the senses, emotions, and memories, and so on. So all of these people um, and our researchers and, in fact, um, uh, business owners uh, and operators in tourism are interested in this idea of experiences. But, of course, the problem is when you get so many people talking about the same thing, you get a mess. And part of this is to tr- part of this talk is to try and see how we can disentangle some of the ideas to understand what we actually mean by experiences and uh, provide a one way to, I think, study them better. So this idea of experiences, um, you can look at it first from the viewpoint of the supplier side. Um, a, a hotel offers an experience or the customer view where the customer has an experience um, that is subjective to them. It's individual for them. And it's part of their day-to-day um, life, uh, perhaps purchased as part of their consumption processes. But within that c- customer view then, um, I want to talk specifically about two different ways of thinking about experience, conscious experience and remembered experience. So what do I mean by those things? Well, first of all, let's take the traditional idea of a visit to a business. So on the, right, on the left-hand side here, you'll see a business is a box with backroom functions and front room functions, which typically might be called the service scape consisting of staff interactions, the design of the uh, building or the the uh, restaurant or something, uh, and maybe intangible features and so on. So what happens is a customer who's the who's the on the red line, we might call this the customer journey, starts and uh, does some things outside the business thinking about the, um, this experience they have, making bookings, then they go into the box. They go in and have uh, interactions in the service scape uh, and then they leave and they uh, might feel afterwards satisfaction. They may have memories and may recollect things in past. And typically when we talk about experience, we are talking about this remembered experience. We're talking about asking people after they've already had their experience, what did you think about it? Were you satisfied? Do you have memories? Was it memorable? And so on. Okay, so that's the remembered experience. But I want to talk to you about perhaps a slightly different view. It's the same process. The customer journey goes into the uh, service scape, but there are a number of things happen, um, a number of events, mental and physical events happen in, uh, in that service scape, which each of which may be something that is emotional or um, something that we remember. And at the time we are having those things, we would call those conscious experiences. So, some of those conscious experiences are memorable. Some of them are subconsciously um, experienced and not remembered. And some might be ordinary experiences, which we may experience, but then subsequently forget. And in fact, most of the things that happen in a service scape or in ordinary life are not remembered. So, um, so now there are, we've got two different ways of thinking about experience. A remembered experience, that is, I have had an experience. It was something that happened in the past and it gave me some outcome, some emotional, uh, exper- uh, emotional feelings, spiritual change, psychological or learning outcomes. But then there's the second one, the conscious experience, which is more about what you're having now. Right now, you are having an experience and it's a mental transformation process. And therefore, I think it looks at different things. Why is it important? Well, because it's the basis 
of designing experiences. You see, if we're only looking at the remembered experience, we're think we're not thinking about all the things that happen to a customer. We're just thinking about the ones that they remember. Whereas if we can understand all of the things, we might call these touch points or areas of um, interaction uh, or conscious experiences, then if we understand that there are a lot of those, we might have an opportunity to develop them further. So this brings us to the idea of experience design and perhaps some of the techniques that we can use to design experiences. Now, look at this. This is um, very complicated. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an academic, so I like to have lots of diagrams and things. But think about um, those dots that I was talking about, the touch points or the events that a person goes through. They're, they're along the top here of this diagram. And each one of them has some characteristics. Let's say the entrance statement. Think about going to a winery. If you go to a winery, the first thing that you see when you drive into that winery is some sort of entrance. And usually they have something which tells you you are now in a winery and therefore maybe you need to think about wine. That's called an entrance statement and it tells people that you've arrived and maybe it might be the beginning of a little bit of anxiety for a person or it may be this, the beginning of some other emotions. Um, you then get to the entrance, uh, the, to the door or to the uh, restaurant or to something and there's a welcome. So all of a sudden you're thinking, oh, okay, I've made it. I'm here. Things are going to be okay. I can relax a little bit now. Then you go through the experience or the service scape or the activity, but I would like you to think about that as being a story. Literally, you are creating a film with yourself as a character. So the first thing is, what's your character? Are you having an, are you having an adventure? Um, are you... Um, uh, are you having uh, a romance? What, what is this character doing? Um, and then you, uh, in in the so during the um, experience, the uh, you then establish the story. There's a middle to the story. There might be a climax to the story, and there's an end, which are all the things that normally you might happen. Um, think about in a restaurant or in a hotel or in a uh, other sort of attraction. But they are the tangible things. The important thing is the story that you're creating in a person's mind, which at each point is creating emotions, uh, perhaps excitement. Um, it, uh, it is reaffirming ideas about um, why you're there and so on. After you finish, um, you might uh, be you might fare well, and if you were calm and had achieved your goals without any um, major problems or major excitement, you might say, "Well, I was satisfied." That probably means that your emotional state during the majority of this uh, experience was um, calm and peaceful happy, not excited. If you had experienced moments of joy, of extreme uh, excitement, uh, positive excitement, and that was related to the purpose of being there, your goal, um, then Jenny Ma, who's one of the participants, uh, would say you are likely to not feel calm, but feel uh, excited and happy, maybe delighted. So that outcome, delight or satisfaction, is really due to a whole series of events which can be seen as a story that creates emotion, 
Uh, and so that's what I mean by the experience design process. It, you can think about it as the tangible things that are happening, but I would like you to think about it in terms of these um, personal, emotional relevancies that are occurring. So in some ways, this is like a, um, a play, dramaturgy. This is the way people think about plays and movies and why, the way they're built. Um, it's about a story. Um, so a story has a series of steps in it. It's the setup, the introduction. Perhaps there's a climax and then there's a resolution. Uh, so your, your, your business experience, the thing that you're offering to people, is accepted by them as a, uh, as a story. So stories have, um, if, if your story, if your business is related to a place, then let's say it's in a national park, then that place should match the story that you're trying to tell. If you're going to a tropical beach, you should see the things that you might expect to see at that tropical beach. And that's a, that's a, a place where you might expect to, uh, to do certain things. Um, a place is also associated with your motivation or your goals and stories and things. So they provide you with ways to contact customers and make contact with them. And a place also has familiarity or novelty for customers. So that means that, uh, and, and so motivation, goals, uh, stories, and novelty or familiarity are important characteristics. Um, you can think about a place like a film. Um, ask yourself a series of questions. I won't talk about that. Um, you can, uh, so there are different types of experience outcomes from different places. A natural setting um, is usually associated with restoration, calm and is calm and peaceful. A uh, theme park is usually associated with emotional arousal, positive emotional arousal, and is some maybe connected in some way to your identity. I have achieved something by going on that big ride, perhaps. Uh, a number of people on the, at the conference are interested in wellness. So um, some settings, often natural settings, uh, provide a balance of social, physical, and intellectual needs. And some, um, some settings may be associated with transformation. Um, the interesting though, thing, though, is the same place can be interpreted in different ways by using different stories or emphasizing different props, different artifacts in your design of the service state. So what you're doing then, you need to direct the attention of the customer to the parts of the place that are important to you. And also to use such techniques as uh, Anna's work on co-creation, where you use interaction with other people to create interest and direct people to the ideas of what they're trying to do. Co-creation is a very good way of bringing people into the situation, making them focus on particular activities. Uh, here's uh, cooking classes, interaction with nature, dolphins, uh, picking apples. So lots of different ideas. Here's the, this is another thing that I think is very important. This comes from a good paper by the authors Dud and et al. Um, they talk about three different types of conscious experiences um, that or sorry experiences mental experiences subconscious which are not remembered ordinary experiences which are usually not remembered but may be dealt with by um, uh, using scripts or routines in our brain and generally produce low arousal and are connected to low goal strength but then the ones that we're focusing on so much in experiences in experienced literature is actually a very small set of those things. 
extraordinary, memorable, meaningful, or transformational experiences. And the interesting thing about those, those experiences is that they have certain characteristics in common. They are usually associated with high novelty, high surprise. They are usually connected with meaning, uh, are meaningful, which is another way of saying goal importance for me is high. They involve lots of thinking in our brain, high processing. They will usually get you excited. They will usually then lead to some emotion. And if you have emotion, you're more likely to get memory. And if you get memory and emotion, you're more likely to think that you have had something special. And it's also lead, more likely to lead to transformational change. So by thinking about the different... So tra many things are happening in tourism, tourism experiences, um, but we're only focusing really on a small proportion of them. We also measure the outcomes of experiences in many different ways. We talk about customer outcomes. Uh, we might talk about outcomes, positive psychology outcomes. We might talk about customers, customers receiving value or quality or satisfaction or mem memorable experiences. We might talk about outcomes such as attention, restoration, uh, flow, creativity, wellness, but really I think these are all outcomes. They're not processes. So a process, I think, involves just a few, you know, it's got, it's got some simple things you can think about. So you've got the customer and what they bring with them. Novelty, that is their previous experience. Is this the first time I've done this? What are my motivations and goals? And what culture, stories, and symbols am I viewing the world with? You create, in a co-creation process, a stage, the service scape, where goods and uh, there are tangible things that are props and you tell stories and symbols. You get some immediate outcomes, emotion, spiritual, psychological learning outcomes, value, for example. And then your long-term outcomes, if you have any, are memories, perhaps, transformation how do you design these things well i'm running out of time but i'll just go quickly um the classical way is to get a researcher or someone to provide some insights experiences are usually more complicated and require a group of people with different skills people with creative skills maybe technology skills maybe business skills maybe other skills to work together and i think the idea of the competencies required to develop experiences um, is a very interesting area because it's the basis for innovation and creativity and relies on collaboration uh, this is some early work that i did you may want to see this stuff um now i want to leave you all of that is really the basis or the introduction to what I want to say now. And I haven't really got a chance to talk about that much, but here's some basic principles for understanding from my view experiences. The first thing is a psychological phenomena that is satisfaction is a property of our brain, not the external environment. A theme park does not produce emotion. A theme park is a stimuli which is evaluated in our brain and that evaluation process, I call it an appraisal process, subsequently leads to an assessment of uh, excitement or joy or perhaps just satisfaction. So another way of say, a similar way of saying that is that the, pr the properties of the external world like beauty, when I see something beautiful, it's not a property of a painting or a building. It's a property of my mind and how I'm thinking. So uh, uh, just as, a, as an aside, in, in some of the presentations yesterday that I saw about uh, experiences, there did seem to be an, a, um, uh, an assumption that stimuli in the external world create emotion, and they don't. So... I think 
if you want to understand experiences, you can understand emotion. Emotions are subconscious. Emotions are rational. I'd have to spend some time explaining that. Emotions lead to feelings. We never understand emotions, but we understand feelings, which, um, uh, which are then communicated to our brain. And examples of uh, this uh, calmness, for example, or uh, let's say how you feel when you've experienced a reasonable service is a low, low arousal positive emotion. And I think it's equivalent to satisfaction. Uh, more detail. This is really important. And this was the work, work that Jenny Ma, who's here, talked about. Um, an event does not produce an emotion. An event leads to an assessment of basically novelty and goal congruence and goal importance. And that then can distinguish between a joint appra um, appraisal of novelty in a goal and other things leads to the brain being able to distinguish between happy, satisfied, and delighted. So um, one other point, novelty. So here, a baby taking the first step, that's high excitement. If you've done that, um, the first time is often very emotional. The hundredth time is work. Our brain is tuned to notice and remember novel experiences because they're important to survival. And that's why highly emotional events lead to vivid memories, which we call memorable experiences. And novelty is one of the main appraisal dimensions related to appraisal. The other important thing is goal, interest, and importance. Um, goal, interest, and importance is is involved in questions like, well, why am I here? How much attention should I give? How much do I need to think about the experience? The poor girl is on a bad date. So she's asking herself, why am I here? I'm not very interested. But the guy may be thinking, oh, this is a great date. I'm very interested. So you can see that two people having the same experience can have completely different emotional outcomes. So if you want to deal with these extraordinary, memorable, meaningful, and transformational experiences, you should be thinking about um, feelings and emotions, about memories, or which then create vivid memories, which then can create changes in knowledge and self-identity. But they don't, those things don't just happen they are related to the emotions that come from conscious experiences. Thank you. That's uh, the end of my presentation. I'm sorry I've rushed through that, Anna, but, uh, and maybe we haven't got many, uh, much time for questions, but um, I have to go to the next session. <laughs> uh, thank you for the presentation. I'm sure that everybody enjoyed. Um, now I'm, it, it, I think that, um, we can look at tourism so from so many different perspectives that some, somehow along the way we may forget about the focus uh, on the tourism experience because tourism is about this this lived experience, this conscious experience, this remembered experience. So thank you very much uh, for showing us that uh, the tourism experience is the key to understanding tourism. So I would ask from participants to ask questions um, to our speaker. Um, and we have some one or two minutes for, for questions. So please, anyone. Hello? Any questions to, to Professor Scott? Hi, Anna, may yes. I ask a question to Professor Scott? Yes, uh, Professor, you mentioned the competency is the basis of innovation and creativity. Can you explain a little bit more in terms of uh, competency in relation to destination developments? Mm. Oh, I think this, um, this issue is very uh, germane for uh, the T Forum because um, if you want to 
develop new experiences or um, another way of saying that maybe you want to change a destination or you want to influence a group of people to develop some new product, you're, you're really getting groups of people together and trying to get them to think a different way. Now, how do you do that? Uh, as researchers, we tend to think we'll write a report. Um, but in fact, um, I know uh, I'm looking at the screen. I can see Adao there. We, Adao, you've been working in Western Portugal, working with some supplier groups there for many years. And it's, you need a different way of thinking from just writing a report if you want to make change um, and work as a researcher um, with industry partners to create experiences. And you need to bring different perspectives. Um, you know, I like to think that I'm fairly, you know, lateral thinking and creative, but there are people out there who are architects or, or, um, or artists who think completely different ways. And if you can get them involved along with researchers, along with business people and somehow get them to work together over time, then you have some collaboratively developed competencies which underpin experience design, but also underpin many other things that are important in tourism. Okay. Any other questions? I believe that Jinu, she wants to, to ask Professor Scott uh, a question. So Jinu, please. First of all, thank you very much. For me, it is super interesting, the, the idea and the presentation. And I have several questions, if you don't mind. Uh, first of all, mm, my question is regarding expectation and perception. Uh, uh, how do you think that with the change of COVID-19, uh, we can signal to the tourists to feel safe, to participate in, uh, in the tourist experience? Because I think nowadays this is going to be a challenge for us. How to give them the feeling of safety to interact with us? which kind of interaction or participation can give them the feeling of safety, not anxiety that we okay, have. No, okay, so just stop there for a second. Um, we haven't got much time, um, and I'm very happy to talk. Uh, maybe we can even arrange a Skype talk sometime, so don't worry about time. Um, just on that, um, you see, you're thinking that COVID creates anxiety, no, it doesn't. Nothing, in, nothing creates anxiety. Some people deal with COVID very well mm -hmm. and some people deal with COVID very badly. Huh? Um, so what's the difference? Uh, I think you can think about COVID as a situation which may or may not generate emotion based on the situation that a person is placed in in terms of their goals and how important those goals are to you, right? Now, so maybe you can't change that, but certainly you need to understand that. The other thing then is um, how would you deal with it? Well, you see, um, uh, the other side, people may feel, uh, appraise something as being as an appropriate situation to be anxious, but they have coping strategies. Coping strategies are the next thing that happen and they lead to you changing anxiety to something else. So you may be able to develop coping strategies in order to help people to deal with the anxiety and therefore be more likely to travel. Okay. Um, and uh, the literature of coping is extensive in psychology and probably has lots of um, suggestions for how to help people to cope with a problem. That's what you're dealing with. Yes, thank you very much.